your Fuhrer. The people bought the Utopia and were totally enslaved. Yesterday, December 7th, 1941, a date which will live in infamy, the United States of America was suddenly and deliberately attacked by naval and air forces of the Empire of Japan. It may have been a surprise attack to the American people, but not to the federal government and the military. Months before the attack, they knew the Japanese were preparing for an all-out assault in the Pacific. And now even the History Channel admits, as well as any other historical record, that Roosevelt, 12 days before, knew the actual date of the attack. They had Admiral Yamamoto's communique saying on the morning of December 7th, we'll attack the Pacific Fleet at Pearl Harbor and deal a death blow. Roosevelt had campaigned on keeping America out of the war. But his backers had been funding the Japanese war machine for years, as well as funding and encouraging Hitler's blitzkrieg. They needed a global crisis to bring in a global government and the birth of the United Nations. That's why six months before the attack on Pearl Harbor, Roosevelt had the naval command remove the code-breaking machines from Pearl Harbor, as well as dismantle the radar. They had to have the crisis to create this global system of tyranny. Think of the dastardly deed they had committed, leaving our troops, our sailors, our boys to die. You see, the global elite had attempted to create a League of Nations at the end of World War I. World War II had to be bigger and on a larger scale so the people would say, give us a global government to protect us from these horrible wars. Good evening, my fellow citizens. This government, as promised, has maintained the closest surveillance of the Soviet military buildup on the island of Cuba. Within the past week, unmistakable evidence has established the fact that a series of offensive missile sites is now in preparation on that imprisoned island. The purpose of these bases can be none other than to provide a nuclear strike capability against the Western Hemisphere. In the early 1960s, the federal government needed an excuse, a pretext to invade Cuba. Seldom do we see examples as sterling as the Northwoods document, where the federal government actually put the plan to paper. It was actually carried in published media reports in ABC News and, of course, the Baltimore Sun. The federal government proposed blowing up airliners full of Americans, saying that casualty lists in U.S. newspapers would cause a helpful wave of indignation. The mad general, the architect of this plan, was General L.L. Lemonser, Chairman, Joint Chiefs of Staff. He got approval for his Faustian plan all the way up to the Secretary of Defense. President Kennedy was not amused. In the plan, they elaborated on how they could bomb Washington, D.C. and blame it on Cuba. Attack Marines at Guantanamo Bay using U.S. Army soldiers dressed up as Cubans. Or, they said, just like the sinking of the Maine to get into the Spanish-American War, we could blow up a ship again. Here they are admitting the problem reaction solution system and how effective it is to motivate the American people to get them behind a war, a nuclear war with Cuba and the Soviet Union. And you didn't believe that the government was capable of hijacking its own aircraft and killing its own citizens. President Kennedy had always been a servant of the elite, but he was so shocked by the Northwoods document that he signed Executive Order 11110 shortly before his death, announcing that he would abolish the Federal Reserve System. He also began to pull us out of Vietnam and signed an order to abolish the CIA. It was at that point that he was assassinated. You see, he had decided to be a leader of the people, to defend their interest, and the New World Order couldn't allow that to happen. Now you'll see the evidence of the federal government targeting the World Trade Center twice. October 28, 93, and October 31st, 1993, New York Times, as well as the December 15th, Chicago Tribune. 
the federal government was actually caught on tape by their informants, ordering them to let the bombing go forward, to cook the bomb, to give the terrorists the detonators, to create yet another crisis, this time to usher in a police state and a war upon the American people. Unlike the Northwoods plan, the FBI actually carried out the attack on the World Trade Center in 1993. They actually hired a retired 43-year-old former Egyptian army officer, Ahmad Salam, and paid him $1 million and gave him real explosives, a detonator, and told him to build a bomb and to give it to the foolish people that he was controlling to allow them to attack the World Trade Center complex. There was only one problem with their plan. Mr. Salam was not as ruthless and sociopathic as the FBI and their globalist controllers. He began to get very concerned right before and, of course, after the attack, saying, why are you giving me real explosives if this is just a sting operation? When they told him to go ahead and let the attack go forward, he secretly recorded the head of the FBI in New York ordering him to let the bombing take place. It's very important to understand that all the evidence you just saw is documented, 110%. It is part of the public record. The FBI admits it, but the media wrote a few stories about it. There were a couple of nightly newscasts that was never heard of again. But unlike Pearl Harbor, where the government allowed the Japanese to attack as a pretext for war, the federal government financed and controlled this attack on the World Trade Center to create a system of anti-terrorism, to sick a homeland security system on the American people. There was only one problem. The drivers of the truck didn't park it up against the main support column as they had been ordered to do by Mr. Salam and the FBI. No, my friends, they parked it about a dozen feet away, and so it didn't bring down the building. And in consequence, they didn't get the massive death toll they needed to create the martial law system they were hell-bent on implementing against our constitutional republic and the American people. To the American people's heart, the feds finished the job on September 11, 2001. April 19th, 1995, in downtown Oklahoma City, multiple bombs ripped through the Alfred P. Murrow Federal Building, and as usual, federal fingerprints were all over this tragic event. Then President Bill Clinton, taking his orders from on high from the New World Order chieftains, needed a crisis to get his gun control agenda through, as well as his plans for a socialized America. Taking a page out of the strong men's handbook, Bill Clinton knew that a crisis of this magnitude, endless images of mangled children, would pull on the heartstrings of the American people, and they would beg for the Anti-Terrorism Effective Death Penalty Act that he had failed to pass just a year before. The bill absolutely eviscerated mass of sections of the Constitution and the Bill of Rights. We've been investigating this tragedy for over six years. The amount of evidence is staggering. Let's just hit some of the key points. Now let's get into it. ...station that that one explosion caused, because here's now what we are starting to learn about uh, the succession or what someone obviously hoped would be a succession of explosions. The first bomb that was in the federal building did go off. It did the damage that you see right there. The second explosive was found and diffused. The third explosive that was found, and they are working on right now as we speak, I understand, both the second and third explosives, if you can imagine this, were larger than the first. So try to imagine two Boy. or threefold happening mm. uh, what we've already seen there. It is just incredible to think that there was that much heavy artillery that was somehow moved into the downtown Oklahoma City Federal Building. Two other explosive devices were found that were not detonated and they were larger than the first. I think he said another bomb. Oh my God, another bomb. 
We uh, just saw, if you were watching there, there was a white pickup truck backing a trailer into the scene here. They're trying to move people out of the way so they can get it in. It appears to be the Oklahoma County bomb squad. Uh, it's their bomb.